Josh, buddy, you had a huge season. Congratulations. I mean, you're amazing you. at World Championships. Uh, let's just start with an easy one. Rose and Thorn of the past year. I think just the, the season in general, obviously being at Florida, um, being able to have, you know, a good NCAA championships, obviously, a, even good conference before, um, but then also going into the trials and then still being able to, to get it done, you know, in a, in a different pool, the long course, long course meet immediately after. Um, and then obviously, you know, making the team and then carry, carrying that through the worlds and obviously being able to medal. I'd say that's the, definitely the, the rose. The thorn would definitely be new, new training environment, new, new group, new things to get used to. I wasn't with, you know, in previous years, I was with kind of my coach that would be with me at the, at the meet, um, like a world's, uh, but this year was a little different. Um, obviously the pro program was different for me. And then I had to come back to with the Canadian environment and just kind of with my preparation, I felt like it didn't, it wasn't where I needed it to be. So first half of the meet wasn't, wasn't where I felt I, I should be or based on my training or anything like that. It wasn't where I wanted to be that first half of the meet, but I was so happy that I got to, you know, still come back and have a, and have a good performance at the end. So what do you ultimately take out of this year going into, uh, going into Paris? Um, I, I mean, I, I learned so much from, from this year and it's, Honestly, all the I just take it into my training. Basically, now the the way I train, um, just kind of train smarter, have more specific details in mind, and um, more race specific things I want to do. Um, obviously, for when a for when a big meet comes, so I'm just definitely say the experience definitely helped me, and I'm definitely a lot smarter going in this year than I was um, going in before. Yeah, well, you just competed at the U.S. Open too. Pretty sweet, nice little podium with you and uh, Haroon and Dressel, of course. So you've landed on your feet uh, really well. I I I, I want to ask, like, there's some big French stars too, and obviously they're gonna like be a big deal in Paris. That's gonna be pretty cool, eh? Like, I, the atmosphere on the pool deck is gonna be unbelievable. Yeah, it's definitely exciting because you know Tokyo, we got that kind of taken away. Um, so it's going to be fun get some fans in the stands and obviously kind of just bring that, that kind of excitement, that environment that Olympics and Olympics should be. Um, so it's definitely going to be pretty exciting. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say this cause I'm on the media side of things, but I'll, I'll quickly say like, I had the privilege of competing in Vancouver mm. and the one thing that was like the most overwhelming was the, just the noise when a Canadian mm -hmm. raced, when I raced. And so yeah. just be wary of that, man, because it is mm. so over the top loud when a French, a French athlete's going to be racing. Oh, yeah, I felt I've I felt like um, a little bit of that, um, I would say Budapest, whenever like Milan, which was saying any any Hungarian, you would definitely hear it. Um, and I think South Korea, my first my first senior team, like when it, whenever uh Whenever a Korean's going, you the the crowd would be getting loud. So yeah, I've I've had little little glimpses, but definitely Paris is gonna be you know they're, they're gonna be cheering for their for their guys. So yeah, yeah Paris obviously. is gonna be yeah. it's gonna be amazing, and yeah. even just like Team Canada itself, like Summer, uh, Ledecky, Titmus, I I'm like some of the greatest showdowns I think are gonna happen in the pool. It's so exciting. Yeah, yeah. No. Definitely gonna be intense. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Even in a lot of events, it's like, it's it's all so close. Like there's a lot of events where it's like really close. So it's gonna be it's gonna be some good racing. So a little birdie, I'll I'll uh, name her of course, Brittany McLean. She goes, "What's so impressive about Josh is that a lot of folks actually kind of struggle in their freshman year. I mean, whether you're a high performance athlete or not, like freshman year is scary, but." you are absolutely in the pocket uh what's helped you get there um i don't know i i kind of came in and obviously my my goal like i didn't put any crazy expectations on myself obviously when you move into college and ncaa it's it's a completely different pool it's it's a you know short course yards instead of long course meters so it's completely different 
Um, so I didn't really put a lot of expectation on myself. I mean, honestly, the only benchmark I had were, were like the records because I was like, oh, what's the record? That's kind of, that's the only benchmark I had because I, I, I didn't know what a fast time was technically. Like I didn't really understand what it, what it meant because they were so different from, from what I was used to seeing. So I was literally just looking at what a record was as kind of like, I don't know if that was good, but especially to start out, but that's what I was looking at. And that was kind of um, the standard that I wanted to hold myself to, to, to start. But yeah. And I mean, I just, I just worked hard. Obviously I was put in an environment where other people also worked hard and people were able to push me. Um, and I think it was definitely the right environment for me, a good, a good team atmosphere, obviously a bunch of people that, you know, have done great things in the NCAA and, and on the world stage. So I was just putting a, good spot honestly to succeed you are training alongside caleb dressel which uh is a pretty sweet training partner i, I w would have yeah. to assume do you guys have much in common uh yeah we're, we're both pretty competitive i would say <laughs> we, we for sure have that in common but yeah i mean we both love it um definitely both love the weight room i like the weight room and he's definitely he's he's good in the weight room we both love the sport and we're both looking to improve. So it's kind of cool to have somebody, you know, to, to bounce ideas off of or somebody you can match up with in practice um, all the time. So yeah, I'll definitely say it's, it's been, uh, it's been pretty good having him as a training partner. I just saw an interview where you said like, we be racing every single day against each other, <laughs> but there has to be days where you're thinking, Oh my gosh, like, let's just take your 80%. No. Yeah. See, so this is uh, I think this is the thing. Whenever one of us wants to take it eighty percent, the other person's gonna be feeling good. It's just like in a, like you're not gonna. This sometimes you're both feeling good at the same time. Sometimes one person not feeling as good, but there's just that standard um, that we kind of set, and then we're just always going at it. And it's kind of good to have him because there's just no days off. Um, and if both of us are feeling bad, you're gonna have somebody else in the group that's gonna be going fast. So there's really there's no. There's no day where you can just uh, not not give it everything and still be beating people and still. I think he said this like there's there's nobody in the group even that can just take an off day just because of how well how well everyone trains. That's a pretty nice little environment to be in though. Um, head coach Anthony Nesty, uh, 1988 hundred fly uh, Olympic champion. So he's got a pretty sweet little resume. What's clicking there? Uh, I mean, he he definitely. Definitely, he definitely knows what's up. He knows he knows how it goes. He knows the ins and outs of. Obviously, he he's. It's nice to have a coach that's been in that spot, um, that obviously knows what it's like, and he's able to kind of translate that into his coaching, um, and also really good advice because he's had the experience. Um, so he's definitely just someone that's really good to take knowledge from, and yeah, he's like you know he's chill, laid back, and uh, it's just kind of cool to have that type of person as your coach. Yeah, that is good. You, you kind of need to have like someone that's a little bit laid back, especially when you have a few superstars in a training group, because it can just keep ratcheting up, you know? Yeah, like, like he's he's tough. Like he's also like he has his times where he's like he he's on you like you got to get on it. But for the most part, if you if you really get to know Nesty, like he's just chill. He's not really. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's definitely a pretty cool guy, a, a good person to be around. Yeah. What are you taking in school? Right now, I mean, this semester I actually wasn't too bad, but I'm looking at um, health, going into the health side. Um, might be, I'm looking at, I'm lo right now my major is health, education, behavior. Um, you can kind of go to nursing from there or, or the, uh, physical, be a physical trainer. Um, that's kind of like the, the fields. It's, it, it's a wide range. I kind of like the, the coursework of it. It's pretty fun. Um, one of my friends is actually taking the same major, uh, Jake Mitchell, and he wants to go into nursing. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of where I'm at right now in terms of in terms of school and what I what I want to pursue. Good for you. I see. I don't like yeah. needles enough. Like I could never be a nurse. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about a nurse. Like I've I've definitely been thinking about it. Everyone says it's a good occupation, but for me, I'm just still trying to figure out. I've I know I'm like some other people. I think Kieran. Kieran Smith, he's taking uh, physiology and kinesiology, and um, some people are looking to go go to PT school. So there's a lot of kind of I know I want to go in that route, just kind of do something that would be able to keep me around sport. I think 
Yeah. Um, that's the kind of way that I'm looking. Do you like taking school? Like, is it a little bit of a, like, reprieve or refuge from just thinking about laps all day, every day? Sometimes it's good, especially, like, recently when you got exams, it, it gets tough. <laughs> yeah. The, the training ramps up and then also the school ramps up because you got uh, exams. So that part gets a little tough. But, yeah, sometimes it's nice to not focus on swimming because I can get pretty, you know, just like focus on every little detail and sometimes it's good to just forget about it and just kind of have your own have your mind just shift somewhere else else for a little bit so yeah 100 percent. i remember 2010 i was so stressed and i was taking a course on ancient egypt and i was like oh this is the best like it was yeah, like yeah. i wasn't thinking about lap times i wasn't you know i could leave practice at the door i actually think it was like a big a big factor in just keeping me steady eddie yeah, yeah I, sure. I also heard you're a big fan of the swamp though you you uh yes. you love football yeah. are you like second yeah. guessing your career choices right now <laughs> i mean yeah it's going to games are still super fun like I, I i still enjoy it a lot um just like the atmosphere being in the swamp being in that stadium is crazy like i'm i'm glad that i chose it for that like the atmosphere is always a good time um but yeah i mean i I love it. Like it's it's great, and I definitely love football. I love I love watching football. I'm definitely one of the guys in the stands that's going crazy when a big play happens. So, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm definitely enjoying it a lot. Yeah, I've never gone to a college game to be honest. I'm I'm a CFL girly because I'm from the prairies, but uh, yeah. just the images are unbelievable. Like how how significant college ball is down there. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's it's good. <laughs> You originally uh, born in Scarborough, but spent a mm -hmm. lot of your earlier years in Trinidad. Yeah. Would you have been a swimmer if you weren't growing up next to an ocean? I don't know. That That's a very good question. Uh, my dad loves baseball. My dad's been as well, a huge baseball fanatic. Yeah. Could have been playing baseball. I don't know. Um, obviously, I, I, I liked football, but... I feel like if I'd end up going in Canada, I probably wouldn't go to football. I, I might have done baseball, but yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure. Swimming was kind of, you know, just for water safety to start, and then it kind of built it from there. But it's a pretty good question. I could have been could have been doing anything. Uh, baseball, basketball, you never know. Were you always good at swimming? Yeah, I would, I would say so. When So my first swim lesson, one of the – the person that was running it was kind of noticed that I just wasn't afraid, wasn't afraid to like put my head under, or like go down. So it was like, you should put me in, in swimming. Cause all the kids were like afraid to just jump in initially. And apparently I wasn't, uh, which is weird. Cause I was scared of the ocean, like for sure. But if it was a pool, I was fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you get back to Trinidad a lot? Like, I mean, that's a pretty lovely place to call a second home. Yeah. I haven't been since maybe 2018. It's been a bit of a while. Um, hopefully after this year, I'll, I'll be able to go. But yeah, it's definitely been, it's been too long. I, I need to go back because I still, I mean, I still know people from some, some of the people on the national team or people that I've trained with, trained with. So it would be, it'd be nice to, to go back there and um, just, just see it again. It would be exciting. Yeah. Maybe decompress after the Olympics. Yeah, for sure. Do you still have family there? Like, what, what do you miss most of it? Um, I just miss, yeah, the, I still have a little bit of family there, but I definitely miss just the, the culture. It's laid back. It's just island life. I honestly miss island life sometimes. And it's warm. It's kind of like here. It's warm all the time. Um, beaches are always close. Like, that, that kind of life I definitely miss. I've never gone to Trinidad, uh, and I feel sorry for myself because I actually have a cousin that's from there. Um, yeah. but I was just in the Bahamas and they got me with their sky juice. Like as mm. soon as I had that <laughs> very yeah. potent gin based drink, I was like, I love <laughs> island life. I was there. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Yeah. I, it, it'll be nice now. Cause I'm a little older. I could probably enjoy it a little more when I was a kid. I was just kind of running around, but I, I kind of want to go back now to see what it's like so I can yeah. get like the full experience. Absolutely. What yeah. are you, uh, what are you into outside of? outside of sports i mean uh, i know you played the cello is a music mm -hmm. is music still like a big part of your life yeah i mean I, I i love music one of my roommates actually he's um 
he makes beats and he's been like showing me kind of some of the stuff he does that that's his kind of thing he he can also play guitar you know i i play guitar um still i haven't played cello or i i play the stand i used to play the stand-up bass in high school for a bit um haven't played those in a while just because i haven't been able to buy it like first of all getting it and then being able to store it somewhere would be pretty difficult but definitely i want to look into that as as um i get settled um but yeah i i love the cello and and love the the stand-up bass i have a bass guitar and and a regular um acoustic guitar and yeah music it's definitely something great just to just to pass time and not be on your phone all the time i like i like music but yeah one of, one of my roommates he uh he likes making beats he's actually from lithuania he's uh he's made the team for paris he's a breaststroker and he swims at florida um and yeah he makes beats and he showed me all oh, this is how you you know put this beat together and i was like oh that's pretty cool i might i might look into that but that seems like more like his thing but it's pretty interesting yeah you can, yeah you can steal it you can borrow it yeah. doesn't have to just be <laughs> yeah. his thing you guys should yeah. just like you could be a household of swimmers and musicians. You can make your own band. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> my, my roommates also. Yeah, my roommates got a my other roommates got a piano. Um, so yeah, we. <laughs> yeah. You could be swimming's version of the Spice Girls. Like, come on, this is a million dollar idea. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if if practice doesn't take up too much time. <laughs> too much time, we can we can get into it. You. Um, I mean, I, I had the privilege of covering the World Aquatics Championships this past summer. And yeah, you come out with, with your uh, headphones on. What do you usually listen to before a race? Uh, um, there's a lot. Probably just rap. I need something to get the blood flowing and get me hyped up. Meat Mill, um, stuff like that. I would listen to all rap, like DMX. Just something, just something that wakes you up. Um, that's definitely what I, what I'd be listening to before, before I get in. Sometimes get me in the zone. Sometimes I have music. Sometimes I don't, um, it's not, it's not something that I need to have no like ritual or anything, but definitely, um, on the bus ride there or, you know, warming up, I'll, I'll have those headphones in and kind of zone in. Yeah. I, that, it was a ritual for me for sure. I, I always had to laugh though, because I'd be like warming up, like truly like rinsing my cottage cheese, eating, <laughs> eating salads without extra virgin olive oil. You know what I mean? Like the peak of fitness and the music I'd be listening to would be like smoke weed every day. Like, <laughs> I'd be like, this is the yeah. farthest thing from my life, but it's getting me in the zone. Yeah. You just, yeah. Whatever, whatever it takes, whatever you need to get, get into the zone. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's something I listen to, listen to kind of get the blood flowing, you know, get the blood flowing. Um, yeah. You have a real presence about you. You come across mm -hmm. as a very, very confident, just grounded human being. Where where do you think that comes from? Uh, I'll definitely say my parents. Um, that the kind of confidence I'll say comes from my dad, you know, definitely growing up, he would definitely instill that in me and, you know, taught me to be confident in myself and, and to believe myself, not doubt myself. Same with my mom. My mom also taught me, you know, stay humble, don't, don't, um, just remember the the work that I took to get there and where you came from and always be humble. So kind of that, that was a nice, nice mix that I think uh, they, they instilled in me from when I was really young. I always found it like easier to be confident when I was happy in my own skin. Where, yeah. where are you happiest? I'm, I'm happiest. I guess I should say when I'm competing, like that's just something I love. I kind of love the rush of, of competing. Don't like losing though. So there's like, <laughs> there's like a balance but even still like even when even when it doesn't go the best i i love the kind of adrenaline rush you get from competing and that's kind of what what brings me joy well that's a good quality because you're yeah. in a racing sport like yeah yeah do you, so when you play like mario you, like nintendo switch do you just love mario kart because i truly am am that person like i even my yeah. video games they just have to be racing all the time Yes, Mario Kart, Super Smash Bros. If you're playing Mario Baseball recently, like it's, <laughs> yeah, just any game. I mean, like Call of Duty, anything, anything where you could compete, um, talk a little trash too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have a bunch of guys here that uh, that are gaming. 
Um, right now they're like they're building a, a a Mac downstairs. They're building a PC setup right now <laughs> for one of my roommates. They're just <laughs> okay. So you guys are becoming the Spice Girls and like the next Steve Jobs. Yeah, yeah. So wait, no. The, so two of my roommates. One's Eric Brown. He was at the at the World Champs. Uh, and then the other, my other roommate, he's from Pennsylvania. He's the one with the piano. Uh, they're both, you know, mechanical engineering, computer science. So the, they're the brains, me and Alex. So like, you guys could take, you guys could take the hard school, do the, do that stuff. But we'll, we'll chill out. We won't go, we won't go too crazy, but yeah, they're, they're the geniuses. So they're, they'll be the ones, you know, building, building computers and setting up monitors and all that stuff. And I'm just looking at, ah, oh, it looks cool. I have no idea what's going on, but. <laughs> that looks but pretty cool that is cool though and like i would yeah. imagine that they understand the ebbs and flows of being an athlete pretty darn well yeah. then like yeah you know yeah. sometimes it's hard to find your words when someone has a bad race but i'm, I'm guessing mm. they get it yeah yeah they do i mean yeah it's i feel like just like another um testament to being here like i, I have great roommates obviously a good environment um and yeah it's just making it a lot more enjoyable enjoyable to be down here that's very cool. Um, you have done so much for so many um, in the pool, outside of the pool, because you're, of course, a key figure in representation in sport. Is that a responsibility or is that a privilege for you? Or does that ebb and flow? Yeah, I would definitely say, you know, ebb and flow. It, it It's uh, definitely a bit of both. Like, um, you definitely feel a responsibility uh, but at the same time, it's not like a ton of pressure. Like when I'm up there, I'm thinking, you know, just race, just have fun, um, and just compete. It's something that I love to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I definitely in, in, enjoy it. And obviously the sense of pride in being able to, to represent and, and show people that you can do anything you want. It doesn't matter. It like, it doesn't matter what anyone else says or what, what any preconception is, um, you just got to go out there and do what you want. And if you believe in something, then, you know, you, you can achieve it. Just make sure that you're willing to put in the work to, to go and do it. Talking about work, what is the thing that makes you happiest in the process and the lead up to Paris? Um, I'd definitely say like the, the small victories, just like getting the little things right. Um, just because so, right now I'm getting to the point where it's just little details that I got to focus on. Like, I know I can work hard. I know I can, um, you know, do, do some, some things right. But it's just those little details that, you know, that I get down. And, um, yeah, just whenever I'm, I'm, I'm able to nail, like, little things that I want to focus on that I kind of set my mind to and I'm able to kind of, you know, just make little, little improvements, um, that's definitely – definitely feels good i'm able to apply things to my races uh for instance that you know that that work out exactly or not exactly but they work out the way that i that i want them to that i envision them working out um that i want to take to you know like an olympics uh bigger meets um getting the work in practice or getting the work at some of the meets that i've been going to that's definitely some of the things that you know those small victories are something that something that makes me happy boom that's the perfect answer, buddy. I appreciate <laughs> your time so much more than you know. And uh, I know swimmers have to train like 17 times a day, starting at yep. 4 a.m. and ending at 8 p.m. So uh, I just really appreciate it. I know how busy you are. <laughs> God. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's busy, especially right now. They're like, oh, you don't have school. It's gonna, let's make it worse. <laughs> yeah. Let's make it worse for you. Uh, so, yeah. Are you done exams? Yes, I'm I'm done now, thankfully. So the stress the stress of school is gone for the next little bit. Um just gotta just gotta deal with working hard, but I'm fine with that. That's a brilliant answer too, buddy. Thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate it, Josh.